Hello. So we're back, and this time we have a nice laptop to repair. Trust me, this is a nice laptop. This is a classic Toshiba, you know, like 10 years old, something like that, i3. I mean, what is nice on this laptop is whatever the problem is there, whatever, we can fix it. So I know before, yeah, I know we, we can fix this, yeah. The problem with this one, pressing the power button, nothing happened. The laptop is coming from a local repair shop. And it's coming with no power, also no hard drive inside, probably they took out the hard drive. So, let's first take um, um, a charger and see what the current is taking. We found the Toshiba plug. We found that plug in the charger here. And it's taking 360 milliamps. Now one problem. This is dead current. Dead current means a current which is not supposed to be taken. I mean, you can see it's coming straight away with 370 milliamps. So this is not like charging current or... Uh, uh, it's, it's weird. Now let's do a test, yeah, short test. Okay, you can see the current is regulated by a power supply. And you know what? Uh, we can see that, but you can see we are rising the voltage yeah, from 19, we are rising the voltage to 22, and the current goes down, yeah? That means that the switching power supply is regulating the car. The current so we know the short is not it's not like a short it's, it's something is taking too much power and what is taking too much power is behind of the switch of a switching power supply yeah so you see we can find a lot of things before we are opening the laptop because obviously that's the first thing you have the customer here you have to quickly to give him a, a right price so we know it's a problem and we know the problem is after a switching power supply. Now I took out the battery. Let me check one more time. But I can bet the battery it will not make like any difference. Yeah, no difference with the battery or without battery. Because if it was the current to be taken by the battery, you will see like a, a delay here. You plug the charger and it's a delay on uh, negotiating the charging current. Good, let's open this quickly. So, 360 milliamps, what can be there? Usually, if the 3.3 volts LDO is shorted, it will take around 100 and something. But I don't know, on this old uh, model, it is possible to have like a shorted EC chip. And uh, shorted EC chip means shorted 3.3 LDO power supply, and that current can go there. But we know... The problem is after the switching power supply, but the switching power supply is working right. Increasing the voltage, the current is going down. That's how you know a switching power supply. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so the screws are out, and now we have to take out the keyboard. I mean, on the past, the laptops were so nice. So check here, yeah? you, you have this thingy, which you have to take it out. I mean, the laptop was so nice in the beginning. You can easily change the keyboard. I mean, what was wrong with this design, you know, with this keyboard design? You have the keyboard here, and you have four screws, and you can replace the keyboard, like, under five minutes. What was wrong with this design? Now we have the new designs with keyboard inbuilt on the top on the palm rest with plastic rivets uh, it's not like I cannot see liquid damage I can't see liquid damage no Okay, now let's take out the palm rest. Very simple. 
And we have access to the motherboard. EAT, some liquid damage here, you can see it. I check here, you can see liquid damage. Not that much, but it is a little bit of liquid damage. If it does the does the problem, that's why the laptop is not working. Let's plug the charger. So the charger is plugged in and it's taking no current. <laughs> that's crazy. So pressing the power button and the laptop is coming on. Okay, I have a current limit. Pressing the power button and the laptop is coming on. And we have picture. That's crazy. We did nothing. I mean, what was the problem with this laptop? You think it's the keyboard? Can be. Can be. So we keyboard attached. Plug in the charger. And you can see it's taking 370 milliamps. You can see that? Pressing the power button and nothing happened. It's not coming on. Yeah, this is this. It is a design uh, issue. I mean, it suppose like every truck from the keyboard should have like a resistor to limit like any current or anything. You know, like okay, I have a shorter keyboard, but the laptop should work. You know, I can plug a USB keyboard. So this is not the first laptop I seen with this. So I seen Lenovo, I believe, we same like laptop died because of the keyboard and that's not normal so in this point we know the keyboard is faulty because without the keyboard it's working great i mean this is how the laptop was before now now it's like you know it's insane we have uh, power management chips with firmware inside, we have BIOS for the USB Thunderbolt, we have multiple BIOS, one BIOS chip connected to the chipset, one BIOS chip to the EC, and we end up with a lot of problems. I'm not sure if they realize, actually, raising the complexity, you raise, actually, the chance for that laptop to get faulty feels bad man I, I have nothing to repair here i mean this is so beautiful i mean you can see big mosfets you have on the other side you have some proper like nice ic you can find any ic on google with the data sheet i mean check it check on those hinge i mean check here how many hinges like toshiba hinge you you seen before like this model specifically this model i proper solid solid laptops solid laptops not sure who stuck the, the BIOS battery with papers. Probably to be from the factory. Very possible. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. I will try to clean here how much I can. And uh, it's nothing what we can do. We, can, uh, we have to order a keyboard. You know how much is the keyboard? It's around 7, 8 pounds. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I have the feeling, you know, the world is going crazy. And I don't understand why. You know what? I never understood why do you need, like, um, gesture inside of the BIOS. Because, obviously, they complicate the BIOS. Actually, you see, we have a lot of BIOS issues on the, on the new laptops. As a tech guy, you know, you, you know, if, if you are in this business, just tell me, yeah? Just tell me. Tell me, Sorin, you're wrong. I found this charging port faulty on many Toshibas. <laughs> you will never find this port faulty. Never. Check, check this charging board. You will not find this port faulty. Never. You know what you'll find? You'll find eventually what I found, you know, the plastics, they are getting broken because of the user fault, obviously, and they push behind the, the charging port, but you will not find this port faulty. I mean, in the last 10 years, so many things changed. And, you know, from like a solid laptop, you know, we end up with some, you know, rubbish. You can't even touch them because you are too scared to damage them. Anyway, I will stop now. I will say uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video and uh, see you on the next one.
Bye.